Okay, in this example, we're going to look at a Poisson distribution example, a, a, what you know, I would consider a real-life example, certainly something that you know, somebody out there in the real world is, is considering. So again, the probability mass function of a Poisson distribution is f of x equals lambda to the power of x, e raised to the negative lambda, divided by x factorial, where x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. So in this one, I'm going to show how to compute this by hand. You wouldn't want to do it by hand. You'll do this stuff. Most you either use a you know a computer program or a lot of books have a table in the back. I'll also show you how to use the table really quickly. I'll probably tie on one extra example as well. So okay, uh, telephone calls enter uh, the support desk of some company on the average of two phone calls every three minutes. So if one assumes an approximate Poisson process, what's the probability? Uh, four or less calls during a nine minute period. So we're going to let x den denote the number of phone calls in a nine minute period. So we're also going to talk about what this value of, of lambda represents in this Poisson distribution. Okay, so we'll talk about how to compute lambda, and that's something that's very important for these type of problems, but it's also very easy to do. So one word of warning here I want to point out too. The results, I think, of these initially can be very counterintuitive. Okay, so maybe think about, you know, what you think the probability of getting four or less calls during this nine minute period would be. So think about, you know, what do you think would be reasonable? And then let's actually compute it and see if that syncs up with your intuition. And I think this is a good il illustration of why we have to use mathematics in the world because our intuition, at least mine, is, is still a little fuzzy on these. Okay, so lambda, the value of lambda, that's going to be the expected number of changes in x. So what that represents here, it's going to represent, it's going to represent the average, I can spell correctly, the average number of changes that we can expect that we can expect over the given interval. So what I'm saying here is, okay, so we get two, uh, we get two phone calls every three minutes. So how many phone calls would we expect during a nine minute period? Well, if we get two every three minutes, right, if we get two every three minutes, I guess we would expect, okay, so after two minutes, um, excuse me, after three minutes, we get two phone calls, after six minutes, we would have four phone calls. After nine minutes, we would expect six phone calls. That's going to be our value for lambda. So over this nine minute period, we would expect uh, six phone calls. That's going to be our value for lambda. I'm happy to do some other examples again and, and show how to compute you know, this, this value for, for lambda. Okay, so that's going to be our value for lambda. Again, we could expect six phone calls on average. So again, this is where, you know, again, I think maybe it's a little counterintuitive. If you can expect on average six phone calls, what do you think the probability of getting four or less phone calls would be? Okay, so we'll revisit that question. That's what we're going to solve here. Okay, so in this case, our probability mass function, since lambda equals six, our probability mass function, f of x, that's going to be six raised to the power of x multiplied by e to the negative sixth power all divided by x factorial. So that's going to be our, the function that we're going to use in this example. And we want to calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. Because again, we said we wanted to get uh, 4 or less fo phone calls during this 9 minute period. So we've got to calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. So, well, to calculate the probability that x is less than or equal to 4, you would calculate the probability that x equals exactly zero phone calls, plus the probability of getting exactly one phone call, plus the probability of getting exactly two phone calls, plus the probability of getting exactly three phone calls, plus the probability of getting exactly four phone calls over that period. Again, we can abbreviate that using summation notation. You'll also see this sometimes. So we would sum up from x equals 0 to 4, 
And again, we're using our probability mass function, 6 raised to the x, e raised to the negative 6 power over x factorial. Okay, so that's how you would write this statement a little more compactly using summation notation. So hopefully that's legible. The uh, upper value there above my sigma is a 4. Okay, so again, just to write it out, so this is going to be, well, 6 to the 0 multiplied by e to the negative 6 power over 0 factorial. Recall, again, 0 factorial is just 1. So then I would have, well, again, the only thing that's changing, the only thing that's changing when we substitute in these values is the exponent above the 6 and the uh, factorial in the denominator. Those are the only two places that are changing. So then I would have 6 to the first power, e to the negative 6 over 1 factorial plus 6 squared, e to the negative 6 over 2 factorial, plus 6 to the third, e to the negative 6 over 3 factorial, plus then we would have 6 raised to the 4th power, e to the negative 6 over 4 factorial. Okay, so this is where I did grab a calculator because, you know, I don't know what e to the negative 6 is. I'm not going to do that by hand. So I approximated these values to five decimal places. So 6 to the 0, e to the negative 6 over 0 factorial. I got that to be 0 0.00245. Uh, my next power, when I'm using the exponent of 1 here, I got that, that to be 0 0.01487. My next value, I got that to be 0 0.04462. Uh, my next value, I got that to be 0 0.08. 8924, and my last value here, the 6 to the 4th, e to the negative 6 over 4 factorial, I got that to be 0.13385. And when I added all of those up, I got 0 0.2850, whoops, man, 0 0.28503. So this is where I think it's a little counterintuitive, maybe, because the probability of you getting four or fewer calls is only about 28, 29%, right? That's roughly 28.5%. And on average, you would expect six phone calls during that nine-minute period, but the probability of you getting only four or less phone calls is actually only, it's actually less than 30%. So, um, I don't know. I'll let you think about that. To me, that's... Again, maybe I don't think about Poisson distributions enough, but it's certainly a little bit counterintuitive to me. So, okay, let's see here. So I said we, we would find a table. So here's my, my book. So let's see. A lot of these books have tables in the back. Mine is labeled Table 3, so let me find Table 3. I'll try to zoom in here for you. Okay, so Poisson distribution. Let me see if I can zoom in and make this a little bit... Hopefully that's legible. Let's see, let me zoom in for a second, then I'll zoom back out. So, Okay, so hopefully you can read here across the top. So this is the probability of x being less than or equal to some value for x. So we wanted our little value of x in this case to be 4. So in this case, we would have the probability of x being less than or equal to 4. So we're looking for a value of 4 on the left side. I know there's a bunch of, notice there's a bunch of them. And then across the top, that's where they have the values for, for lambda. So in this case, we need to find where our lambda value is equal to 6 across the top. And then we want the probability to be less than or equal to 4. So you've actually got to go over to the next page. So notice in this case, here's where lambda is equal to 6. It's on my top right uh, corner here. And let's see if I can zoom. Let's see if I can focus this a little better. This is where I've got bad production value, right? Okay, we're just going to leave it alone. Hopefully you'll get the gist here. So lambda across the top here is equal to 6. We want our x value to be less than or equal to 4. So I find, uh, you know, clearly where the... the the row and the column intersect. And notice I'm getting that value of 0 0.285, if you can read that. And that's what we got when we computed this, right? We got, um, whoops, there's, there's all my handiwork where I did it off to the side. So let me zoom back out here real quick. So point, so the, the table gives 0 0.285. I did a little bit, you know, carried a, a few more places. So I had 0 0.28503. So that's how you can use the, the table really quick. Let's ask one more question since we can go ahead and do this real quick. 
So we answered the probability of us getting, uh, what was it, four or fewer phone calls. Let me find one thing here. So we did four or fewer phone calls. So let's see. Um, let's calculate. So let's see. Let's go ahead and figure out. Let's see. Where did my black pen go? Let's figure out, you know, what is the probability? What is the probability of five or more phone calls? So what is the probability of five or more phone calls during a nine minute period? Well, to figure out the probability of five or more phone calls during a nine minute period, in this case we're trying to figure out the probability that x is greater than or equal to five. Well, to compute this, we can't read this off from our table. So what we do is we take one and we subtract away the probability of us getting, well, if we want to figure out the probability of getting five or more phone calls, we can do one minus the probability of us getting less than or equal to four phone calls. Well, we already computed that value. And again, from our table, we said that that was 0.285. Again, I computed it and carried out the 03, but I'm just going to use the table value and use 0.285. And if we do the arithmetic, 1 minus 0.285, we'll get 0.715. So the probability of five or more phone calls during that 90 or that nine minute period is a little bit over 70%. So again, maybe this makes perfect intuitive sense to you. Definitely throws me off a little bit. That's why we have to do things uh, and be meticulous about it. So, all right, I hope this example makes some sense. If you wanna see another Poisson distribution example, I'd be happy to do one.